Twitch, it's highly dominated by men. Well, on men Twitch are, it is, sure. But like, what, people always say, look at the makeup of Twitch, it's highly dominated by men. But look at the makeup of, like, OnlyFans. That's exclusively women. And they're making way more than the top of Twitch is. So, I mean... <laughs> She was definitely baiting hard. It, it has to be so weird when you guys watch somebody that markets themselves as like an internet debater and shit. And then, he's mar and then he's identified what should be an easy target. Because every day on stream, he's talking about how like deranged I am, how much I've devolved, how much I've become conservative, reaction, et cetera, et cetera. That's like prime pick. When I see people like it, from my perspective, these are the people that I froth at the mouth at. When I see an idiot with a large audience who's willing to engage, that's like free real estate. I'll take those debates every single day of the week. That's like, the, my, that's my best content and his as well. So, yeah, so why do you think? I'm just curious. I think, all right, you're gonna disagree hard, but that's okay. Sure, that's fine. Uh, so we can go over the issues with the take itself, or what I perceive to be those issues. Go or for we it. Could, fucking cat, hold on. Or we could do um, just issues with sort of how you engage in general. Either one. I th either one is good for either me. One. Either one is good for you. All right. So initially, be quiet, cat. Initially, I was uh, keen to uh, agree with part of your take, right? That um, men are far more lonely and isolated. But when I went to look into it, there doesn't seem to be a m uh, much difference between how we experience loneliness between men and women. And as far as... Um, Attention Wait, what, what take are we even talking about right now? Hold on, what are we actually talking about? Oh, yeah. So, you, uh, your tweet uh, at that one girl who was, like, attention-seeking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hold on, let's just, yeah, let's go back. Pull up the tweet. Yeah, if a moderately attractive girl had to live life as an average man, I think they'd kill themselves in, like, two weeks. Tops from lack of attention. Yeah, okay, so which part do you disagree with here? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. There seems to be an implication that uh, women do not deal with loneliness and isolation nearly as much. Am I wrong or am I right on that? Um, I think the implication is that when like averagely attractive girls can get online and like hardcore thirst posts to get a million guys in their fucking mentions to give them validation and shit, that type of experience they wouldn't have as like an ordinary guy. I think they'd probably fuck with some people. I don't know holistically if they live lonelier lives or less lonely lives. I'm more inclined to think that their lives are probably a little bit less lonely, um, mm -hmm. because they are women. I think are more likely to have close friends and are also um. Um, and also have more fulfilling friendships than men. I don't know where you get the idea that that's the same, but. So, like I said, when I initially I was inclined to agree, right? Like, it seems to be that men are um, far lonelier. But according to a meta analysis, that doesn't seem to be the case. We seem to be experiencing uh, the same amount of loneliness. However, what we value in terms of relationships and friendships tends to differ. So basically, men. We value a decent sort of web of friends, whereas women, on the other hand, uh, they value closer relationships. So, what's going to plunge a woman into like feelings of loneliness is when they lose that like one friend that they've had for like seven or eight years. Whereas for men, it's going to plunge us into those same depths is going to be when like our friends just sort of whittle away, drift off. You know. Yeah, the, I don't think my I don't think my there. comment was necessarily about the overall trends of like men and women and how we form friendships. I more was just think of, it was more right. just yeah. like the well, attention seeking, uh, validating seeking behavior online. Well, or, or how easy it is for them to make money, right? Like as far as like getting attention possible. Um, I, some of them good? maybe, but I, I, that might have been in a different in a second tweet. But yeah, well, the thing is, so they can acquire a fuck ton of attention, right? Like I think we've all heard this in uh, ContraPoints video where she talks about how she had to choose between uh, the bag of dicks being thrown at her versus nothing. Um, she would choose like the bag of dicks. She would rather have um, a like dog shit quality attention and an, a mass of it versus having none, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that is true, but I think there is a kind of loneliness that one ex experiences. Like, it's kind of like a loneliness in a crowd thing, where you're surrounded by people, but you connect with nobody. I think women are much more likely to experience this. Whereas, you know, if you put a guys into a crowd of a few people, you know, or I, I should say, like, a few, like, pretty close buddies, but maybe not nearly as intimate as women are, um, we're, we're much more alleviated in that regard. Um, but as far as ease of attention, they do... So they can, like, 
kind of just post pics and get attention. But from what I've noticed as far as interactions on Twitch, uh, women have to do more of this um, multi-platform type of, uh, uh, I want to say, grift isn't the word I'm looking for. Hustle. Hustle. They have to do, I mean, uh, you don't have to. It's just way fucking easier to just sell pictures of your feet than it is to, like, try to be entertaining or have a personality that's appealing to watch or anything like that. Well, you have to, um, so you have to, like, so, so you're having to, like, do the YouTube to Twitch to Patreon to OnlyFans pipeline. Wait, hold on. No, no, no. no. You're making men... that sound way more complicated than it is. It's Twitch to OnlyFans, it's YouTube to OnlyFans, it's Twitter to OnlyFans, and Instagram to OnlyFans pipeline. The pipe, there are many pipes, but they're short pipes. Okay, but still. Right, a lot of them are like a lot of them. Usually, that I see at YouTube, I see a Twitch, I see an Instagram, I see a Patreon. Yeah, sure. And but I mean, most course, guys will have like these types of social media accounts too. I don't know how much they use them, but that is itself a type of work. Also, if you're so so like OnlyFans, right? Uh, a lot of it's about parasociality in its own way. Um, it's not just about hey, that's the type of ass I like. Uh, it's also about the person, especially when you're getting attached to that person through one of these methods, so through Twitch or through YouTube, right? Kind of, yeah. Um, Most of the largest um, uh, OnlyFans girls though, don't even, I mean, they don't even do their own DMs, they just pay people to do that. But. Oh, no shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's uh, there's some elements of this that I'll be uh, ignorant of, but you'll, you'll educate me. Um, so it seems to me like they're having to, so, like, on initial glance, it's like, oh, you just sell feet pics and it's easy, right? But you're having to, essentially jump between like all of these different jobs to make to essentially succeed in a similar fashion right uh if you look at the makeup of twitch it's highly dominated by men you and want men twitch are, it is sure but like, what people always say look at the makeup of twitch it's highly dominated by men but look at the makeup of like only fans that's exclusively women and they're making way more than the top of twitches so i mean <laughs> are they tell me about that so I think Hassan is probably like one of the top people on Twitch. Okay. And he's making uh, like 300K a month, maybe four or 500K a month. Amaranth is one of the top people on OnlyFans. She's making like, I think 1.5 million, five million uh, a month, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, um, and in sure. general, there were big leaks of what all of the top, um, there were big leaks of what all the top Twitch streamers were making. And I think there were leaks of what all the top OnlyFans creators were making. And I think the OnlyFans were like 10Xing the Twitch streamers on average. For, for the top top, I don't know how well that plays on an average, but... Yeah, so um, there's a few things. Um, there is a slight, it's like the difference of 38% to 43% of um, slight difference where men are slightly uh, better off as far as like getting donations for Twitch, meaning that the women are work, having to work slightly harder on Twitch in order to receive the same amount of donations. Very slight though. Um, you are definitely correct, like obviously if you're, a, like if you're a man fucking on uh, OnlyFans, you're probably getting more of your money from, I would imagine the people that you're like, like you're contracting your services out to, like, well, they need somebody to hit it from behind or whatever. Not so much people are going to your channel to see you, to pay you directly, none of that stuff. Um, so you are correct there. But I guess what I'm noticing, and this is why, I. It seems like it's just very, very complicated the way that we all kind of suffer and the way that we experience loneliness. I don't think it's as simple as like- Sure, I don't necessarily disagree with that. My, the main qualm I had was I don't like the super baity messages where on Valentine's Day, decently attractive women post stupid shit like, oh, I wish I had a boyfriend, blah, blah, blah. I just think it's the most, I think it's the highest tier incel bait that you can possibly post on the internet. I think that's what my okay. initial tweet was in response to because it's 99% of the time these women have girlfriends and they don't even tell people because they just because they know it fucks their business model up and then like obviously they know they can talk to guys or they are talking to guys but they're like pretending like oh I'm just like you like I'm lonely and I'm an incel too blah 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 like regardless of the fact that they might be chatting up like five or ten different guys at once or they could if they wanted to like it's just that that is like it's like part of the lowest tier incel bait that I've seen on the internet it just triggers the fuck out of me when I see it. You know, and I actually, so so obviously this went in a dir different direction for me. I was originally thinking that I would just flatly agree with you on the whole loneliness isolation bit, but that's kind of irrelevant. I actually, unironically, <laughs> I look at this tweet. This shit's funny as fuck. I, I, I have no problem, I think, just with like your engagement in this part. Like, I don't think you were too mean. Uh, she was definitely baiting hard <laughs> on some bullshit. Like, 
I, I, I have a hard to, I, I find it incredibly hard to believe that she, like, it's not, it's not her gaming. Her gaming a lot for a long period oh, of time. Oh, that too is, is not, also like an ultra insult. Not, like how many gamer guys are like, like that would be like a girl tweeting out like, I wish I could just find a guy that wants to like grind League of Legends with me all day. Or I wish I could find a guy that'd be happy if I could just sit and bake for him all day while he plays video games, but I'll never find a guy like that. Like, it's just like such a stupidly, obviously like baby, po I don't know, it just triggers the fuck out of me. No, I think you're. I think you're totally fair, and right? To get triggered, honestly, good shit. Oh, and then Melina too. Uh, she posted a banger for She was like, "I'm not, I'm not introducing you to my little female friends." Which, yeah, well, yeah. We, I mean, we fuck around with each other. Or maybe she's not fucking. Um, no, maybe she's actually. Yeah. When I so when I initially uh, posted, it was definitely more of like in response to the kind of repeated pattern. It's like a, it's like an eye roll thing of like, Jesus Christ, Destiny saying something that is. I disagree uh, with that. Oh, okay. Let's go. What you what do you disagree? I don't with? think it's an eye roll thing. I think it's because people want to fight me on the merits. Because if I were to get online and I were to start tweeting about how conservatives are all shit eaters, about how vaccinated unvaccinated yeah. people should be left to die in the streets, I could be as aggressive as I want, or about how like cops should be like professionally like we should make like cop assassins, or I can make crazy shit about people on the right, and everybody would be soy pogging me, soy pog, soy pog all day long. So I don't actually buy the like oh I think your rhetoric is just hard. I don't believe that. I don't believe that at all. I think that it's because of who it's targeted at. I agree, actually. Um, I have included that. Like, I, I did a bunch of little notes. I spent two hours uh, getting ready. <laughs> you gotta over prepare when you're, uh, when you're like a nobody talking to a ten plus year sure. debate lord. Um, but yeah, I agree. Because when I thought about it, I was like, well, you know, honestly, Rob or Captain Winner or whatever, uh, you wouldn't have an issue with this if it was done to people you don't like. It's only when it's done to people you like. So, what is the issue, right? So, and I think I've kind of identified it, right? It's when you're baiting people merely for having just biases in general. And I, like, I think there needs to be more, like, like they need to be fucking up in more ways than just they have a leftward bias. And they're going to easily be baited by you saying something that has underlying truth to it, but sounds kind of sexist, right? Like, I think they need, I think there needs to be a little bit more to that, what they're doing. <coughs> Sorry, my kid. Oh, are you saying right? Um... Sorry, oh, but anyway, yeah, yeah. So, so, so my feeling is that if you're just baiting people for having simple biases, then we're all drinking that Kool-Aid. As we engage with politics, news, media, uh, whether you're liberal, you're going to have those liberal biases. Left, you're going to have those left biases. Right, of course, et cetera, et cetera, right? There needs to be something else going on, I think, in order to justify I feel like that I sort of uh, bait where you put out something that sounds egregious to the audience you're trying to bait, and then, like, you bring them in, and as far as what that extra is, I think we'll. I think that's. Wait, hold on. Wait, I gotta get, say, say this again. I don't understand. So I shouldn't be it should, it should, mean or baiting people because they have obvious political biases. It doesn't apply to literally every single person in the history of existence. Yeah, there needs to be more. So okay, if like, all right, let's let's play out the scenario, right? So you say something, uh, it sounds sexist or it sounds racist, but there's some underlying truth to it, right? A bunch of people get big ass mad. They hit you up on Twitter. I think it leads to a boring conversation where they come on. They're like, "Yeah, so uh, what did you mean when you said blah blah blah?" You know, that sounded like this. And then you explain your very you know reasonable underlying take. And they're like, "Oh well, uh, okay." You know, like. Okay, can I like, hold on? Are you are you like an anti fan of mine, or do you watch my shit? Uh, I probably oscillate. Uh, okay, so you're two. an anti. You're an anti fan, and you're a Vosh fan. You're a Vosh fan, right? I am a Vosh fan. Okay, do you not know, do you realize that like Vosh does this exact same shit? So why do you get mad when I do it? Is it just because I tend to do it more against people that you don't like or, or people that you do like or? Hmm. I am new to Twitter. So if Vosh does this. No, no, not just in Twitter. Like Vosh is super edgy. I know because he got it from me. He's like a clone like 2.0 of me. So I don't understand how you can be so mad when I do it, when Vosh has a reputation for doing this, like sucking infinite dicks on Coconut Island, making jokes about horse dicks and shit. Like all, like Vosh used to be like this. Or like all the hyperbole he engages on on stream when he talks about things like police officers and stuff. Like, I don't understand why you are so mad when I do it, but you're a Vosh fan, so you must be. I don't see, no, I, don't, I, I disagree. I don't see a lot of debates. I, I don't, I can't recall the last debate that happened because of a simple like, Hey, here's a tweet that sounds stupid and or racist or sexist. And Doesn't then, he have like, an entire like, community of people on. online that have like bots dedicated to accusing him of being transphobic and shit because of the way he engages with trans communities? 
I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Doesn't, like, isn't there a huge swath of people online that say that Vosh is transphobic and shit? Because of how he engages with trans communities? Or are you not, are you maybe a really new Vosh fan, so you're not aware of all this stuff? No, 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 I've been, so, I've been a Vosh fan. So I became a Vosh fan, like, a year before y'all's falling out, and I discovered you, uh, through that. And, like, I really wouldn't describe myself as an anti-fan. It, I would sadly say that the content of late hasn't been particularly engaging, unfortunately. But, um, now there are times where I'm like, fuck yeah, that's some good shit. Okay, Fair hold on. No, okay, I don't, okay, I don't believe anything. It's okay. Or, I mean, sorry, I do believe you there. Okay, I think that, I think that from the other thing, I think you don't like me being mean to people on Twitter because they're people you agree with. I think you largely agree with that, right? It's just because they're people you agree with. Yes, I already agree with that. Okay, right? so, well, okay, I want to... Wait, 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 hold on, real quick. Yeah, go for so it. So here's what I wrote down. Mott and Bailey shenanigans. Understandable, but overused. Also, it's lazy at this point. Largely, I think the issue is just the repetitiveness of it. I think there needs to be new ways of getting people on. Why, if people are getting this triggered I'm over relatively sure. basic statements, it seems like it's still a pretty effective way to drive engagement, no? I don't think so, no. I think, I mean, the best you've done is, like, what, this meta engagement with me? Have there been any other engagements? Uh, well, no, but that's because people... Well, okay, so how do you feel about this, right? So Vosh is like your debate lord god, right? But he won't talk to me because he's like, well, <laughs> why do you think he won't talk to me? Oh, <laughs> we're getting into this one, okay. Because he, because he, he talks Same. about me a lot on his stream because I get linked all the shit when he does, right? But why, why is he afraid? So like, let's assume I have a decent sized audience, which I do. Let's assume that my takes are wrong and I'm stupid and I'm spike driven, et cetera, et cetera, uneducated, I don't know anything. Why wouldn't Vosh team me as like a prime candidate? for like stealing my audience if I'm like so stupid and misinformed and wrong on things. Well, that's, I don't, I haven't agreed that you're stupid and misinformed. But that's what Vosh right? says all the time. I'm just curious what your impression is of it. Oh, well, isn't it more that you're spite driven? Isn't that the, the more the line? Not that you're- Yeah, but like, would he ever, informed? let's say that like, would he ever be like, I was going to debate Tucker Carlson, but then I think I realized that he was spite driven, so I decided not to. Isn't that kind of weird? <laughs> that's a weird example because he would be insane to deny a debate with Tucker Carlson. Um, so that's a little hard for me to compare. Uh, well, but, or any, okay. or any like obviously stupid conservative who would challenge Vosh to debate that's like on a similar size platform of mine. Like if there was any other conservative that had 500,000 subs on YouTube or 400,000 subs on YouTube, like I would debate Vosh. Do you think Vosh would ever say, well, I'm not going to debate that person. I think they're spite driven. Would he ever say that to any other person of my size? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't know. So why else do you think he says it about me? Why? I'm just curious what your perception is of that. I have my understandings, obviously, but I'm curious what, because it, it has to be so weird when you guys watch somebody that markets themselves as like an um, internet debater and shit, the debater, the and then he's mar and then he's identified what should be an easy target, because he every day on stream he's talking about how like deranged I am, how much I've devolved, how much I've become conservative, reaction, et cetera, et cetera. That's like prime pick. When I see people like from my perspective, these are the people that I froth at the mouth at. When I see an idiot with a large audience who's willing to engage, that's like free real estate. I'll take those debates every single day of the week. That's like, the, my, that's my best content and his as well. So, yeah, so why do you think? I'm just curious. I think, all right, you're gonna disagree hard, but that's okay. Sure, that's fine. Just kidding. Why would I? Oh, sorry, I muted myself. To fight him when he's two and three. Wait, 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 I muted myself. Where did I leave you at? Um, you're gonna tell me why you think he does it. Yeah. Okay. Oh so, yeah. So, I know you're gonna you're gonna disagree hard with this. Sure, go for it. Uh, Let's hear it. Yeah. I think, and I know you feel like he was the same to you. Obviously, I think you feel he was probably worse. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I think that you were quite poor to him. Uh. I don't think he treated him in particularly good faith. And I think that he has decided that the level of conversations that y'all can engage in are so full of, um, I guess, a lot of mess, a lot of hate. A yeah, lot but of again, hate. so I'm just asking you, because this is what I'm going to say. This is how this conversation is going. Any, any reason that you give for him to avoid me, I'm going to ask you if he would give that reason to any similar size conservative, right? Like, oh, their audience is really mean or messy or... Like angry? Would he ever say no, that? Not the audience. I don't think it's the audience. Though he does find he does also take issue with the audience, of course. Um, Which we have a I huge overlap of, by the way. But actually, I want. I honest to God wonder how that works. So I so I uh, I get on the Reddit and it kind of amazes me that you can have overlap. But then like I'll be on r slash destiny and I'll see like 
Well, I mean, on, on both sides, actually, uh, where people are, like, frothing at the mouth about Bosch, about, you know, like, some, some shit about his morals or whatever. Um, I think I think just particularly, like, the big crowning moment between you two was the stream after y'all's last debate where all those people came on. Um, and, like, it was just, they, they, they were able to just sort of, like, talk about what, like, I don't know, this is some, this is some year and a half old shit. Something about, like, his morals were, uh, like, fucking Hitler enabling or some shit. I think that was just like, uh, like that just burned him too much, and he was like, "Fuck that shit." Like, like, so he like, doesn't like, do it because he's mad, because he's asking. Like again, look at it from my perspective. If I okay, go for wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Y'all, y'all have a very unique relationship. It's very hard for for be like compared to like Rob Nor. If Rob Nor was like said some shit and then he wanted to debate them, you know, it's just it's way different. It's very hard to praise. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, so but I guess going back to um, so I think that you need more varied or dynamic ways of engaging with people to draw in more conversations. I think that people are seeing, for one, people people are kind of aware of the shtick at this point. I I don't I don't agree. I disagree. I just wholesale disagree. I think that it's because they know they're wrong. I think they know they're wrong and they can't defend their positions. One hundred percent. Well, then there's nothing else. Well, that's kind of sad, isn't it? Wouldn't that just mean that there's nothing else to be done? That no more conversations are to be had because they all know that they're wrong. I mean, that's what seems to be the case. Otherwise, why wouldn't you take the easiest shutdowns in the world? The easiest audience grab in the world, the easiest owns in the world. Like, I'm supposedly like the internet debater and so like owning me has got to feel like really good. Like, why wouldn't you just take those easy owns? Hmm. There's some lack of uh, confidence in their ability to debate you. Yeah, but what about somebody like Vosh? Isn't that his whole thing is internet debating? Yeah. So why would he lack confidence in it? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think he does. We're talking about sort of the general swath in general. Like Vosh is obviously, yeah, you and him. Are Do you not think I can talking. literally defend any position? Like it's just I'm just a good debater, and that's why nobody seems to want to address any of my social positions. Nobody seems to. Everybody seems to have one conversation, end up getting proven wrong on seven like actual facts of the matter, which is what happened to Vosh the last few times we've spoken, by the way. Um, when he tried to bring up, say, like, the Florida Supreme Court stuff or the Florida hanging chat stuff, he didn't know anything about any of those issues, right? He can say it was, like, spite-driven or whatever, but he just, he just didn't know. Which debate was that? Um, the one of the last big ones we had where, um, he was talking about how, um, Anton, Antoine, Anton Scalia and, uh, George W. Bush were fascists because of how they rigged and stole the, uh, was it 2004 yeah, or 2000 election? I don't remember. Um, and, yeah. Or what about, or we could go to even the more recent one. Um, I'm curious if you even know this. What do you think my position is on like social workers and welfare checks or whatever? Did you watch this one? Antonin, sorry. Yes, I did. I definitely sided with Vosh on that one. <laughs> Wh which part uh, what of it? Uh, which one do you want me to ask? Well, what, what, what did you think my position was? From memory, I think your position was that cops absolutely should be present on all of these calls in regards to um, uh, mental health, basically mental health calls. Um, am I wrong? Um, so that was one of them. That generally, yeah, maybe not like that was one of them. Not yeah, necessarily, but almost, yeah. Um, and then the other one had to do with the fact that like I'm just instantly dead. What a fun champion. Um, the other one had to do with the fact that like for when dealing with police officers or social workers, that if you've been committed before against your will, forcibly uh, committed, that you might be more afraid of like a social worker than you would be of a police officer. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, I was definitely, I was definitely, I was definitely guffawing at that, at, at that moment being like, God, what an insane take. I think it's possible like on a so, sort of like niche individual kind of thing that that's that's possible which individual do you think when you say like, niche individual I, like the kind of person that's been forcibly committed yeah yeah, yeah sure so well, I think, isn't that the whole point of what i was saying i think the way you extrapolate it to the point of um well because of this one rare individual that we need cops well but that was exactly uh, what we were talking about that was the conversation mm -hmm. yeah i disagree with you and i think he already did well Wait, I, don't so what, I, 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 I don't know the problem here. Hold on. Why not? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so I'm curious. What part of this take do you disagree with? Because I'm absolutely dead right on so both I of these, but I'm curious which part you disagree with. Yeah. That. So. Wait, are we are we are we di diverting into a debate on? Well, no. I'm just. I I kind of want to hear. 
kind of want to. Yeah, I'm just, I'm curious which part. Just, I prepared for one of these talks and I did not prepare for the other one. No, that's fine. It's just, this isn't like a research, what do the studies say? It's just, I'm just curious personally, like what, what part of this do you disagree with? I think, all right, and I have my own anecdotal experiences to kind of back this up. I think that this is such a rare occurrence that it does not necessitate Okay. The, wait, wait. Uh, when you say this is a every call. okay, I, I think, I think okay. That, hold on, wait, wait, real quick. I, I understand what you're saying. It doesn't necessitate cops on every call. Okay. After I had that conversation with Vosh, right? So I don't know how far you follow my debate stuff, okay? But a long time ago, when I was arguing in a two-on-two -two Vosh, I said something like, "Cops don't need to go to all wellness checks." Do you remember this? Surprisingly, I missed that debate. Okay. But well, a lot of people. I I've read like I've read all the Reddit stuff, so I do recall that like that used to be your take. And yeah, people, on people the said were this, like, and I had to stop. I mine, right? yeah, so I stopped because, like, because people talk to you, people message you. Yeah, you got reached. Social by, workers um, message me, and they were like, "This is like you're just so wrong. You don't understand why." And then I listened. I was like, oh, "Okay." After I had that conversation with Vosh, um, because his subreddit was going insane, people like you, um, and even some people in my community disagreed. I they were like, I think like. It, it was like three to six social workers came on afterwards and we talked like uh, to because i was curious what professionals of field thought and ubiquitously every single person that came on was like yeah if i'm a social worker i'm called to a house i'm not going to enter a strange place that i don't know without a police officer there just to like say like hey everything is like safe go for it that was like the take i got over and over and over again now i can understand maybe saying like well i don't fully agree with this all the time 100 percent but I don't understand how anybody can say my take was crazy or completely out of left field when it feels like so many professionals agree with me and I didn't see a single educated professional pushing back anywhere ever, except for Vosh and his fans. I, so I'm, I'm, I'm biased on this, right? I think that having cops on every one of these calls is gonna exacerbate um, attentions more than uh, if you like have them selectively put out on calls. For one, it's a resources issue. And then for two, um, like I, I think that this is something that dispatch can probably delineate when you need them. And well, this is, dispatch does do this, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't call the cops, you call nine one one, which is dispatch. Yeah. Right? Like, so I was an EMT for four years, right? And uh -huh. obviously, like, like I can go into a house, like, so we can get a call for, you know, grand, you know, grandma who fell and he's picking up at two in the morning uh -huh. or whatever. Uh, but you know, obviously, like the cops don't come to all of those calls like mm -hmm. they come to very few of them they do tend to come to um now i'm in a very southern state let's keep that in mind yeah. uh they do tend to come to mental health calls but all of them and again this is my anecdotal four years of experience we, we were fine like we didn't, we didn't i'm, cu I'm curious though if you got I, I would be willing to compromise well here yeah, real quick because you, you said you were an emt if you guys ever got called to something that was involved like say like a stabbing or a shooting or anything even remotely violent like an altercation or whatever, we, we, cops are probably coming to that, right? They are coming first, and we hang back yeah. until they get say the all exactly yeah. yes. Yeah. So if you're being called to a house and it's literally like somebody's having a mental health crisis, like a breakdown, they might be suicidal. They might right, like it's a, it's so severe that you're calling somebody. Is it really that crazy to say like just send a cop just to like clear things out before you enter a stranger's home and start trying to assess the situation or help somebody? Like, is that really that insane of a take? Um, is that really that insane of a take? Um, like if somebody gives you a call and it's like, hey, here's a house you've never been to before in a neighborhood that you don't know much about and my brother, uncle, mom, sister, whatever is feeling like suicidal, they've locked themselves in the room with a knife or some, or who knows, or they've said they're gonna do something. Is this a situation where you think it's like, nah, just send the social worker alone and let them deal with it? Or is it really that crazy of an idea to be like, well, maybe like a cop should show up just to like make sure everything is okay or the area is safe for the social worker to, to work in? I think I think 100% it has to be dispatch oriented. Otherwise, you're overusing resources. But is it that insane for a person to think that like you need to be thrown in the loony bin? Probably no. I don't think so. Okay, so I don't think we necessarily disagree there. I don't I don't think that it has to be every single call. Right? There might be a case where it's like, hey, my 10 year old is really depressed and I'm worried they're going to do something. We've got them in the living room or something. And then it's like, okay, well maybe in these you don't know. So sometimes it's pills, okay? The sure. reason you need somebody there is you do need an intervention. Sure. But it's not thing where you're like, like, okay, so like the last one that I recall is very benign. I feel like um, about this is before I got out of EMS uh, because the pay is too low. Um, so 
uh, the last one I remember was very benign. The lady was just kind of sitting there smoking a cigarette. We carried her to the hospital, no problem. Cop was just kind of standing there. Obviously, nothing happened, or no, you know, like, nothing crazy happened. It was literally just, we need the power of the state to make this lady who's going to down a bunch of pills if nobody's watching her. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, to come in and, yeah. Yeah. Um, we we could have easily done that uh, without the cop there. And well, what if she would have? What if she would have started to fight back? Do you feel comfortable I mean, as a social wor- what? Well, that's a what if that could happen on any EMS call, but we don't well, but, have them on every EMS. But call. that's but that's why social workers tend to prefer cops go with them because that possibility exists. When you say, "Well, that could happen all the time," when you have a mental health intervention, that's the point of having a cop there. That's exactly the reason. But the, again, we run into the resources issue. I think if you drag okay, cops no, 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 no. I hold on. I, I full on. I just don't agree with you. Nobody, agree. nobody was making this resources argument two months ago. Not a single person. Not even not one. And I bet if I go through your logs, not even you were saying that. It's a resources argument. I don't. I don't believe that was the case. That's just well, that's one part of the argument. And then two, I think it's again unnecessary. I think that dispatch can handle the, handle the delineation between when cops are needed by simply asking more questions with whoever they're talking to on the phone. I don't think it's like. And then as far as like what percentage of those calls it's going to be, I'd be willing to guess it'd be low at least at most, thirty percent of thirty percent of like, mental health crises. Yeah, I don't think they're, they're 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 not as dramatic as like they're they're much more mundane. I think than yeah. But the thing is, you just don't critical. know. You you think that any civilian social worker is comfortable just entering a stranger's house to try to find somebody having like? So if you're getting a call, mm-hmm. either that person's calling you. Or their friend or something is calling you, right? Sure. Um, usually they're there. So you're going to show up. They're, they're going to come to the door. They're going to be like, hey, whatever, you know. And just, again, like, we do this with, like, medical stuff all the time. Like, I have to go into, like, weird fucking homes to pick up some lady out in the middle of nowhere uh, and just put her back into bed at, like, 2 in the morning. I go there, and there's no cop. There's nobody to protect me. I'm not allowed to carry a gun, you know. So Let's say I, that you get a call and somebody— <laughs> Okay, sure. Let's say that you get a call— Hey, my brother is in his room. He took a bunch of pills with him. I'm worried that he's going to hurt himself. And you, do you think that this is a call that you need like a cop to show up on? I would want dispatch to ask more questions from that point. Okay, so, what kind of questions? Right now, right, now, right now I'm 50-50. Okay, what kind of questions? Uh, yeah, so can you tell me more about what started this? Uh, does he have any weapons? He's just been cetera, depressed for a long time. He locked himself in his room and he said he was going to take a bunch of pills. I think they were anti-allergy pills or something. Maybe Benadryl. He doesn't have any weapons. He's kind of a big guy, but I mean, like, he, he's not normally violent. Okay, no. Nah, I would say that would be a no. Okay, let's say that you show up, and he's in his room, and he says he's going to kill himself, but he's locked his door. Now what do you do? Oh, now, at that point, we're basically calling the cops. So now he dies because you decided not to dispatch an officer, and now you're sitting there waiting at the door for the cops to show up when they could have been dispatched initially. No? Yes, but... This is also possible, like, so this has happened before with situations where we get called for just any medical issue. um, Because you did EMT, right? And I think I'm pretty sure I could be wrong. But when you when you do EMT, don't they drill into you that like the first few minutes of like a serious uh, like health thing, like those first few minutes of intervention are probably the most important. Like the difference between like three to five minutes of calling somebody could literally be complete total brain death versus they make a full recovery and they're totally fine. Uh, it's just it's, that's gonna hardly that's gonna hard depend on what's going on. Ninety five percent of our calls are very mundane. Sure, it's they only, could, yeah, they could be. I know, but in so terms of like somebody's time. like breathing being affected or ingesting substances or whatever, right? Like, like several minutes could make a really big difference. It can't. So, so I think you, I think you are gonna have to expand. I know you don't. Well, we'll ignore the resources thing. I think you have to expand resources if you're going to go this route. Okay, so let's say that the resources were expanded then. Would you say that it's okay for cops to go to every call, or at least the majority of them, if the social worker has to go into a strange house or whatever? Is that like, if the resources were there for it? Um, I think that there would have to be a lot more changes to police to the point where people are much more comfortable around them. Like that, that was, So for me to be comfortable and saying, like, yeah, fuck it, send them all the time. Um, obviously, like the resource issue, so plan we're past that. I would also want some fundamental changes to the point. Do where you think people most people are uncomfortable with cops showing up to their house if they're like calling the police? Well, they're calling nine one one, so they expect that some combination of EMS and cops are going to show up. Yeah, but do you think that, like, assuming you're calling EMS or you're calling the police office because you think something is happening to a family member, do you think that when people see the cops show up, they like hide or? 
to, so um one of the one of the biggest things cops get called for is domestic abuse right sure. that's like yep when i like when i think of the proper role of police um i think it's wasted in, t- in as instances of like the drug war and i think one of the best uses of police power is in domestic abuse situations um i think they shine in those scenarios um, okay but that's but this isn't what we're talking about right like yeah i know i'm going on a tangent sorry mm-hmm. uh ask me that question again i i just <clears throat> yeah, if you yeah, call the cops because somebody's having a mental health crisis, you're acting like the cops are going to show up and everybody's going to be too afraid to open the door. Like, I feel like in those situations, they probably yeah, want... Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, thank you. So, um, a lot of times, people have a distrust of cops, but they've entered into a situation where uh, they're they're past the point where they, that, that matters. Like, they can't do anything about the scenario, and if they were to, they're going to legally compromise themselves. So, I would say, like, uh, Jacob Blake is probably a classic example. I would imagine... There was a decent number of those folks out there who were not trusting of authority, not trusting of police. But with how Jacob was acting, with how he was, um, with how he engaged with the people there, and obviously what he had done prior to those, those cops arriving, they felt like like all that shit got put aside. Like this is an emergency that needed to happen right then. So yeah, I think it's very reasonable that you can both have a distrust of authority, but then at the sure, same but time, when you're calling the cops, you probably want them there. Yeah. So like, I don't think so. Assuming we had the resources then. Like it's probably reasonable that a police officer would escort resources and trust. resources and trust for me. So okay, so if they don't have the trust, then you just send the social workers there, and if they can't get in or whatever, the person dies and fuck them. Well, hold on. So I was gonna get into that. Uh, we we so a lot of again medical calls. Cops aren't there to bust the door open for us, and we've had we have to. So we'll like search around the premises. Like I, I I've literally done this before. You know, we go to the house. We got a call to go there. Um, uh, sometimes it's just the alarm, the life alert shit. Mm-hmm. So that's all we know is that a fucking life alert thing went off for some reason. And oftentimes we show up, somebody knocks on the door like, why the fuck are you here? And it's because they like rolled over and pressed the button or some shit. I don't know why that button's so fucking easy to press. Anyway, uh, but there have been times where I've showed up and we knock on the door, fucking door's locked. We have no way of getting in. And now there's an extended period of time that we wait uh, for the cops to show up. So I guess... I'm okay with that trade-off is, is sort of what I'm getting at. Well, but hold on. Because this is a resources thing, not a do you trust the cops thing, right? Because I imagine if you had the resources, you'd probably want police there every time. No? No. To open the door? Just have one officer to do it? I think it'd be fine if uh, we and... Now, I grant you, this is going to be different from company to company. You know, EMS is private. I think it would just be fine if it was standard for us to be able to and have the liability to bust somebody's door down in that scenario aren't you starting to to get into shady territory though now where you guys are starting to take on some of the functions of the police or like liability for the police or so i get a call for a life alert and then now i'm now 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 i have like one extra tool to help me bust the door down and i bust the door let's say you get a call for life alert and you go and knock on the door and the person's like go away and you're like hey we got a call for uh we got a call for marjorie marjorie thompson uh that her life alert went off and someone inside is like she's fine go away it's a guy what do you oh, do? Yeah, we're calling, we're calling the cops at that point. Sure, but now you're like wasting more time. Mm-hmm. Like, why wouldn't you just have one police officer? Wait, but what? What is the? Is it just on principle that you want people to die? Or I'm just trying to figure out like, why wouldn't you just say like, okay, yeah, we bring no. one cop with us for these types of situations? Mm-hmm. Um, my experience is just so. And again, this is anecdotal. My experience has just been that not having the cops there has just never been a problem. The most that we've, the most that I've seen. Wait, you said never, but there have been times where you had to call once you've shown up, you've said. And also if a lot of the calls you're getting over life alert, then. Like like, I've never been on a call. Again, anecdotal. Um, But like, I've also known veteran, like paramedics who they've been on like, they've been at it for like 15, 20 years. And it's only a handful of times this has been a problem. And of those handful of times where they had an extended period of time waiting, it didn't change the outcomes uh, for the patient as far as like, you know, for whatever reason. Now, can that happen? Of course. You get a call, life alert, you get there, extended period of time because cops are having to get there and you go in and that person's, you know, blue in the face. Whereas had you gotten in there earlier, I just, I just, it just, it super does like, there is probably a few resources in your truck that I would say like, you use these like on 2% of calls, you probably don't need it. But I, you would probably look at me and be like, wait, well, what the fuck? That's 2% of calls I could use this on. Why would I not take this? Right? Like, I imagine there's probably... 
Well, I mean, of course. Look, okay, so you could like you could you could hypothetically justify putting an AR-15 on every truck by this logic, but then there's a whole lot of extra shit that goes into well, that. No, right? no, 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 not a, like a police officer is there to perform some basic functions. One is to make sure that the area is safe and secure, and one is to have some representative of the state that has the authority to use force if needed in order to ensure the facilitation of whatever you're doing. If they need to break down a door, if they need to tell somebody, "Hey, you need to step back." Um, like that, like these are pretty basic purposes uh, around a lot of interactions between like the state and civilians, depending on what's going on. Maybe not for EMTs, if especially if it's just like life alert stuff, but for mental health crises, almost certainly. I'm still gonna disagree. I think that I think dispatch can absolutely delineate that difference when the cops not needed when they are needed. I think there's probably a low, um, a low margin. Like like I I I, I would find that that the error there would be pretty low. As far as when they would fuck up on that for um, emt calls probably but for mental health crises and mental health yeah i would i would i, would, I, the, I, would I the numbers are really sketchy i think somebody might chat links something earlier apparently like it's anywhere from five to fifty percent of social workers like report like some sort of threat of physical altercation or something when they go out on these calls like doesn't that seem like pretty scary would you really feel safe going to a, a random house if somebody called you and said that somebody was potentially in a life or death, like mental health crisis without a police officer there, if they lock themselves in a room, you can't do anything. If they pick up a weapon, you can't do anything. If like, I'm going to, I'm just going to say they, they seem to be fine. Uh, social workers being like brutalized and attacked with no backup. Doesn't seem to be an issue that's well, because most like, of them bring cops with them. I, I don't think so. Was it there? So I think this was posted in your subreddit. Lord, I wish I could remember this. I, I hate Colorado old debate. Uh, there was like two programs. Yeah, they were uh, pilot testing the idea of going on some of these without having cops, but that is because the norm is to always take a cop with you, right? Okay. So. Um, yeah, yeah, that is the norm uh, for mental health, yeah. Um, it just, even if we at the end of the day want to quibble about it like. Seemed to work well. That pilot seemed to work well I, from what I remember. Sure, reading and it's it. possible, yeah, that those delineations can be made where there are certain types of crises where you need to send people. But I'm just like, the idea that like, this type of disagreement where it's like, well, maybe the resources are there. Okay, sure. That's not really what the argument is about. Or like, maybe they don't need to go on all of them. Like, okay, maybe. I think we can go back and forth. But to pretend that my position is like absurd or insane when I had social worker after social worker come on here and, and affirm again and again, like, yeah, we need these. Yeah, we have to have this. Yeah, this is important. Um, and then for like a whole subreddit full of like white middle class suburban kids, be like, oh no, never. They should never go on. Middle. <laughs> like that seemed a little bit ridiculous to me. I don't think that's a fair assessment of my position. And I don't think it accurately portrays how crazy or reasonable my position is hey i was living on 20k uh until i got this new job okay so i was I, I so for for the for the majority of my voshite existence i was not one of these <laughs> suburban very much sure. a, um, are you you're in a small in a small yeah, town I, southern I, town though right i live in mississippi yeah okay most of those people probably aren't afraid of cops no this is true, yeah. That is definitely so, like that's that's definitely a culture thing you got to take into account. Okay, I'm gonna spoiler alert. Most people in the United States aren't afraid of cops. Like, yeah, I know. So yeah, I've, I've looked at. So we support the cops a lot more than Twitter would have you believe. It seems there's still a high. I, I would I would imagine cops have a very skewed idea of this. Cops probably talk about this shit like everybody fucking hates them and stuff. But if they looked at the numbers, they still enjoy a sure. pretty decent amount of support. Do they not? Do you think that Vosh's yeah, like um summary of my position is pretty fair in terms of how he presents that i think that like i i, I don't even i haven't even heard the last characterization do you think that my position is really that ridiculous i think i'm trying to think though there was one thing uh that you said i remember go for it Fuck, I forgot it. what was it about no, what was it related to there was a the um there was one take i gave that i think that people that have been forcibly committed are probably more afraid of like a social worker than a police officer that's another take i'll defend to the death i think that's pretty fair oh i think i think so it seemed to be during that debate you were arguing that it was just as likely that people would be afraid of the social worker as they would of the cop that, yes. i think that was the take that everybody well, was like yeah name but it, I, name I, on. hold on i would go even further and i would say they're more likely to be afraid of the social worker than the cop if you're somebody that's been forcibly committed to oh. Do you think that's? And a, then I would. Uh, sorry, think, I, I was going to. Then I would, of course, be memeing and creaming in the comments. Uh, yeah, but do you really think that's that ridiculous of a take? Like, assuming you told me earlier, and I think we agree, most people aren't petrified of the cops. Most people are pretty chill with the cops. The scariest time I think most people interact with cops when you're driving and you're worried that you're like speeding or some shit. But especially if you call the cops for help, I don't think most people are like. Um, what are you doing? 
I do think people are pretty on edge, but I don't think that they are as a like general percept. Like, okay, like you can be supportive of the cops, but like when real shit's going around down around you and like you you have to call them or whatever, I think you can still be on edge. You can you can you can even be politically of the mind that you know like blue lives matter and all that, but still getting pulled over. Yeah, it's scary. Uh, but if you're calling the cops your house, like yeah. most people aren't going to be like petrified. Cops just in general just elicit like a feeling of tensity and and. In, yeah, but not when you call them and you like need scary. help. Not hold on, hold on, stop. Not when you call them and you need help. It's not like a random like you see a cop and you like. I disagree. I don't think that when you need them or when you call them that that goes away. So you think that most people that call cops for help are scared when the cops get there? I think that they are put in a situation where they feel like they need to because this is a level of legality and liability and possibly yeah threat um, that they can't deal with. Right? It's outside of their purview. Uh, if they were to try to deal with it, they risk, you know, not only physical harm, but, you know, the legality and all that shit. Physical harm so, yeah, for I, you? I, I think that there could be a mix of, yeah, I need the cops here, but fuck me, I hate that I have to fucking call them. You know, yeah, I think that's a very common thing that happens. Okay, I don't know how to, I, I, I disagree, but I guess, I don't know where we, how do I appeal to this? Um, I mean, like, I personally, I've had, like, it's very rare. I think only a couple times have I had to call the cops for certain things. Um... I remember there was one time, I'm, I'm pretty scared of the cops because I got pulled over for speeding a lot when I was younger because I sped a lot and it irritated the fuck out of me how many speeding tickets I got. But I mean, when I called the cops because I thought somebody was breaking into our garage, I mean, Rachel did, we called them one day. I mean, it's not like when they show up, they start going through your home for drugs or whatever. Like if you if you call them or anything, I guess maybe if they see something, they will, but. but I just but, think the perception of cops as a thing to be feared or whatever is far more ubiquitous than the perception that social workers are a thing to be feared. Okay, if you think that in terms of, um, if you think that in terms of, um, uh, sorry, if you think that in terms of cops, why wouldn't you think that somebody that's been um, forced into a mental institution against their will wouldn't have the same feeling about social workers? That's not my perception. I, my, my belief is that yeah, like for those people, I, I, I'm guessing you're probably one of those people, right? Like you've had to deal with- Social worker? No, uh, I'm not worried. Worker. Well, actually I would be afraid of social workers more probably, yeah, actually. Okay, yeah, so I was right about that. So I think that, you know, folks like you are the exception, but I do think you are worthy of consideration in this respect. But to me, it's not so much that I think that sending cops to every call is the answer. Wait, 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 why do you think, why do you think I'd be afraid of a social worker? Because I'm, a, I would be afraid of a social worker for another like. We're getting into, so we're getting into my D, like my very vague, DGG lore. Sure, brain. that's fine. It's, oh, not, it's you, that's you, fine. You had to have a social worker deal with you and your ex. Did you? Did no, you those not, were or? cops actually. They were annoying, but I wasn't afraid of them. I was just they were irritating because I didn't believe anything. What was the? I'm probably just vaguely remembering something I read from <clears> your subreddit. Uh, wasn't there a situation where you had to deal with a social worker and it was fucked up or something? Or am um, I misremembered? Well, the, the hold on. Generally, the the fucked up times. Mm -hmm. Hold on, this is bad. Sorry. Um, the the fucked up things I've heard of are where people have to worry about like getting um I think it's called Brady acted in California or Florida or whatever where like you get like f they force you into a mental institution that they think you're a harm to yourself or others. That's like the scariest thing. Um, I don't think that's always scary, but yeah. That's wait, wait, wait! Scary. I need you to qualify that. What do you mean by that? I think sometimes for some people, and like it's it's gonna be how people react to things. You know, you, like, hold on, you know, hold like on. This is pretty fundamentally I'm, important. I'm getting, I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. Okay. I promise I am. Because you know this, like, this is this is because you know this is what I've heard of described as like the scariest thing in the world. But yeah, go for it. I'll let you talk. Go ahead. Yeah. Like you know, like you can hand like one of your friends a gun, and they're gonna be like pretty comfortable with it. Maybe even too comfortable. Uh, given their level of safety knowledge, and you can have like another friend a gun and they have like this like all like fear of it. I think it's like that. I think for some people it's gonna be annoying or it's gonna like piss them off. And then for some people it's gonna be like terrifying to be, uh, yeah, you know, to be basically like taken against your will for a few days because of- You think health. some people might just find that annoying? Yeah, absolutely. Really? I don't think it's all like, fair, yeah. You it's, it's like, that's that's very circumstantial, but absolutely, yeah. 
just annoying. Not like terrifying, not humiliating, not incredibly infuriating, just annoying. Somewhat embarrassing, yes. Uh, but not, but yeah, not like that. Some people are frequent flyers. Like this is just shit that they do. It's like the worst thing that happens is like, so they're, so they're gonna have to go back in for a few days. Uh, they're gonna miss some plans. Like they can't get cigarettes, you know, like, like we're they talking can't about see their friends. Guys. They've got another person that's like, for like won't let them out until they get the okay to leave. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but like, it really depends because there are just people who are just used to it. They're they're unusually used to um, just because of like how how. Okay, but like, if we're gonna say this, if you're gonna go this <laughs> radical on this. Then can't we say okay. that there are some people that are like just used to going to prison or whatever, or police officers, so it's not actually like terrifying at all to deal with cops then? Like that situation, or most people just slightly under Like, I don't know how you can say like, cops can be super terrifying to most people, but getting committed, that's just like kind of an annoyance to a lot of people. Because they're I used think that to people, it. Well, well because it, that's just a simple fact of like, well, most people, I think vastly more people are dealing with cops and live around and experience the, you know, the authority, the power, and the wielding of violence the cops have around them more than people are feeling and experiencing that when it comes to social workers. I think that's far more common. That perception, that feeling, that experience. It's just far more, like, there's just not as many people dealing with social workers, ergo. Yeah. Now, if, 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 if people had to deal with social workers as much as cops, I would still say it's lesser, but it would be, maybe be, depending on what weird cyberpunk world hypothetical we're creating right now, somewhat either decently lower or somewhat to slightly lower uh feeling of fear in comparison okay i mean i don't like i mm -hmm. i don't know what i can say here other than like well this is like this is a, this is a feels and opinions kind of i don't agree i think this is like clear cut like is it i don't think so i think it's super clear cut i would super like... recommend talking to people that have been committed this is just this is, and this is kind of my feeling, I'm being really kind of sorry, I'm sorry. But like, I guess my feeling when I saw people arguing about this was that I think a lot of people just don't know anybody that's been forcibly committed. But like the idea that you would describe it as like a minor inconvenience, I've never, I don't know if I've ever heard it described that way. And I know a few people at this point that have been like committed. Um, it's like one of the most annoying things in the world uh, or, or, or one of the most terrifying things in the world it can be, right? The idea that you're locked in some place, you can't leave until a psych person tells you like you're good to go. They already like are feeling like shit. That's why they were committed in the first place. Sometimes they'll bill you for it, which is really fucking annoying. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know, like when you're already in this state, the idea that you're gonna be dragged off to some institution and then, which is already kind of shitty and then put in some area with a bunch of fuck, I don't know, I've, I've, I've heard, now maybe, maybe, maybe the people that I know that have been in that experience um, were just worse than other people. Maybe some people truly don't give a fuck. Uh, but I know for some people, like, I think, um, I don't want to bring up the R name because apparently that's cheating if I say that. But I, I had a friend that said that like he never wanted to go through the system again, and so he would never like talk to a real therapist again just because of that, uh, because that experience was so horrible to him. But maybe he was like just uniquely not suited for it. But I find that hard to believe. But I don't know. I would. Hmm. Wow. Somebody, and I've somebody, heard, that's, somebody I've also, that was so negatively affected, they wouldn't even they would never talk to a therapist again. Yes, they didn't want to go to therapy because a therapist has an obligation. Um, yeah. That if you are a danger to yourself or somebody else, they will they'll turn you in. You'll get committed. Yeah. Um, oh, how about this? All right. So let's say, let's say I'm just completely in the wrong. Okay. That the that my perception is far askew, and that the vast majority of people who uh, engage with social workers in this manner that get committed, because mm -hmm. well, yeah, we got to consider too. I would imagine most people who are dealing with social workers are not getting committed. It's very mundane. So I'm considering that into my math too. But fuck it. Let's 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 forget about all of those motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about just the ones that are getting committed. Let's let's just look at that pool. Maybe like I'm being too too uh, charitable towards my end on this. And actually, the vast majority of those people are terrified, right? Mm -hmm. So in that scenario, so I still think that I I guess my my general feeling then is just that this pool of people is so small that I mean I still think I, I, I can give you like another general scenario where people are terrified of social workers disabled people especially disabled people that are parents and parents are terrified of social workers if I know that I haven't really done anything wrong and a cop shows up to my house I don't give a fuck like I like like what's the worst thing like maybe like I have an overgrown tree or like my, they caught me speeding somewhere on a camera and they're here, I don't know, some weird shit. If a social worker shows up your house, you might lose your kids if you fuck up. 
depending on what they're there for. And that's another really common fear, especially poor people have of social workers. Did a teacher see a bruise or a mark on your child that they didn't like? Did a teacher say something about how your child mentioned that they were hungry and now you've got CPS coming to evaluate the child worthiness of your home? Did somebody in the neighborhood report, right? That's a terrifying, this is the reason why, I'm personal again, but my mom completely quit daycare because of like one interaction with CPS. I mean, she was a great mom. There was no risk of her, but she didn't even want to risk it. It was the scariest thing in the world to her. And my mom is like the most like Cuban Republican, loves cops, loves the system, blah, 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 person in the world. Um, but I don't know, I think that's a pretty common experience as well. Like I hear that repeated quite often that um, especially disabled parents and lower class parents are worried about social workers showing up because they might lose their kids because of something related to their disability or their class. This is complicated by the fact that the people that I know who are distrusting of um, like child protective services like that, where it's like, yeah, something needs to happen whenever people are pedophiles, but like, I don't know, I feel like they fuck with me too much. Like, I give these kids a pretty good home. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe uh, it's too messy or whatever. Cause like, I got friends like that. Yeah. Problem is though, those friends are also in fear of and distrustful of cops too. So it's not one or the other. Yeah, but I, oh my God, it'll never happen. But something that would be super interesting is, um, really? Why wouldn't you try to charm me? Hold on. Go off, King. <sighs> Chase down. I got that one at least. Um, it would be really interesting to talk to one of your friends on stream to bring them on and be like, hey, I'm just curious. Like, what do you feel? Because, like, uh, now, unless they've got, like, an active drug habit or something, and they this can fits get... my, this, this fits in my earlier point about um, dynamic ways of uh, getting people to talk to. Yeah, I would be so curious what they would say. Or you can even do it in your own time. Like, hey, like, I'm curious. Like, cop shows up at your house. He's got some questions for you. Are you more afraid of a knock on the door and you open it up and it's two police officers? Or are you more afraid that there's a knock on the door, you open up and it's like two guys in plain clothes, one with a clipboard saying like, hey, I'm, um, you know, Mississippi Public Service or Child Protector. I just want to ask you some questions. Even just saying that, like, makes my blood pressure increase. Like, it's such a terrifying <laughs> thing to hear. Sorry, good. If you're genuinely curious of that, and my friend is like a good friend to ask. Like they're very like, they're very politically different from me. Um, I think they definitely trends closer to center right, mm -hmm. I guess. Roughly. Uh, so the, like they, they would be excellent, I think, for you to pick the brain up. And they've had to deal with like CPS and they, I probably hear them rant about mm -hmm. CPS more than I've ever heard them rant about cops. But I have heard sure, them talk yeah. shit about cops too. Sure. Um, Tell you what, if you send me some questions in Discord, I will copy and paste those, send them directly to her, and just with no input or fucker, fuckery on my end. Sure, fuck, uh, just phrase it how you want. I'm, yeah. I'm not, I'm, it's not more like a debate. I'm just curious for your own improvement or for my own improvement. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll say shit like, oh yeah, like I see CPS, oh, but like, I'm not worried. I'm not doing it. I know I'm not gonna lose my kids. Maybe that'll be the response. Like, oh, okay, well maybe some people feel that way. Um, I mean, well, I mean, of course, the, the more interesting thing would be like some polling on this issue, right? Um, well, for, like, there have been a lot of articles in terms of, like, stuff like that. I don't know where the data, I don't know how you can pull, like, what are you more afraid of? But I've seen a lot of articles written about, um, I didn't know about the disabled person's thing until I started researching this more. Because, because again, like, if people start saying my opinions are crazy, I'm going to look up shit to see if it is. Um, but I, I, I started to discover that disabled people are really afraid of police officers um, or child protective services. I'm just inting hard. That's what I'm here for. Um... Because apparently disabled people get really worried that they are not able to provide um, all the requirements for a home for children, and they're worried about losing their kids. That's like a unique fear of them. That's why I keep bringing that up. And then poor people in general. But yeah, you know, I could be wrong. I don't just... You know, I would be willing to bet that amongst that, uh, that population, there's probably a much higher preponderance of fear. Sure. And again, so you keep saying among that population. In my conversation with Vosh, I was very specifically talking about people with severe mental health stuff going on. Not just like the broad pop, because broadly in general, I imagine most people probably don't even know what a social worker fucking does. I imagine that like for 95% of people, if you see a social worker, like, I don't know what, the, what is this guy gonna do? Like ask me some questions and give me a lollipop, I don't, right? Most people probably don't give a fuck about a social worker, but obviously I'm not gonna disagree with that, that's true. But for people that have had run-ins with social workers or have been like committed or have had CPS show up for whatever reason, I feel like those are pretty terrifying experiences. Well, but if, it, if the question is, who's who, who are, who's a person more likely to be fear in fear of in general i think the answer goes to the cops easily easily but i mean i don't know we're we're, we're um this is an old debate uh send me your questions and i will definitely fill it with my friend um oh and then i mean in fairness to you uh vosh was memeing and creaming pretty hard when you hopped in like you 
did not get much of a word in, but mm -hmm. such is the nature of uh, burned bridges and spurned. Well, spurned. hold on. You say such is the nature, but I, if I ever, when I'm rephrasing Vosh's arguments, I think I do a pretty good job at like accurately restating uh -huh. what But when he rephrases my arguments, he literally makes me sound like a fucking moron. Like, Destiny thinks the average person sees a social worker runs away in fear under the arms of a loving cop. Like, this is how he rephrases my positions. They're unbelievable. I don't know if I agree with, this one. I don't know if I agree with that one. Really? Do you want to wait a what second? I'm going to ask people, can you guys find a summary of an argument I've given and see how Vosh phrases it? You think that he rephrases my arguments a accurately? I disagree with the opposite, that you are like far more charitable. Oh, okay. Vosh. Can you... Now, I don't like to no, do can't. this. Yeah, no, okay. I can't. If yeah, you no, could ever just... think of a time where like, yeah, oh, like here is a... We're going too much in memory land. Sure, uh, okay, yeah. Um, we'll just take up the greed of this for you. I'm sorry. Uh, so where were we? So we got onto this tangent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think just more dynamic ways of getting engagement needs to be had. I do think maybe, yes, yeah, so, so maybe may, there, there, there possibly is a, a large proportion of people on Twitter who haven't caught on to the um, to the bait and switch kind of tactic that you got going on, where like you put out a tweet and it's like very egregious in one way or another, baits people out and all that. Um, I still think that more I, I think that there needs to be more dynamic strategy for getting people on um let's see what else did i have for you oh yeah there needs to be more of um if you are going to bay people i think you need more than just the fact that they have a lady in radio because that everybody wait that, hold on i can't hear anything you're saying you need they need to have more than one hello Well, one of us just had a stroke, so I'm not sure. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, okay. Yeah, I think there needs to be something more, because just, like, kind of bringing somebody on and being like, oh, you got me because I was biased towards this, but then uh, we actually agree. I don't know. Hold on, I'm about to feed so fucking hard. Go off. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so be less mean to people to try to bait more people on. I'll think about it. Okay, anything else you got Oh, no, 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 no. Just, if you are going to bait people, ha let, let it be more than just that they, like, have a leaning, right? One way or the other. Like, there needs to be more going on there than just, hey, I'm going to make, I'm going to say this thing that's agreeable, but in kind of a sexist way, and then bam. And then they come on and they're like, well, actually, I agree with you. Like, I don't know. Okay, well, it feels like most people don't agree with me yeah, when they're on Twitter, meaningful. but then when we start talking, it feels like, like okay, mm -hmm. yeah, you were right, I guess. That's what it feels like. Well, yeah, that's that's what I'm saying, right? Well, that. but the problem then is that it feels like people are virtue signaling on Twitter, and then things that I'm saying that people pretend are outrageous aren't really that outrageous at all. They're just like, maybe I'm being a little bit of a bully, but like, if I was bullying conservatives, it'd be A-OK. -okay. I think that... Oh, yeah, there is a side point. I should have wrote this down. I think that if you are more qualifying... Uh and how you bait people. So like, I think if you're more qualifying, meaning that they have to be doing something more than just having a bias, right, again, um, I think that you'll run into less instances where you are unduly callous to somebody. And uh, basically you'll have more interactions where when you are mean to somebody, it's justified. Not just that like, oh, well they're left wing and you're mad about it, but you're right wing. Like, like sometimes, Think? I think that when you come at people, it's not justified, and it's because there's too few parameters being uh, met that initiate you baiting them. Okay, I'll think, I mean, I only have so many characters on Twitter to type, so I don't know how many qualifications I can provide, but... Well, and what about going outside of Twitter? There's so many, there's so many weird and strange communities on TikTok and... and um, I try to on TikTok. I do debates from TikTok, yeah. yeah. I've done a few, actually. I, I, okay, that's good. Cool. What's your favorite one? Oh my god. Because I can't say, like, obviously I can't say you are not being mean, and I think that's a silly thing. That's a very silly thing. Obviously people enjoy the meanness, uh, but it's just that there needs to be more to justify a woman. You know, more of a pause, more of a, hold on, what's going on here? Um, what? <laughs> I think you mostly, I think you probably 
Yeah, I understand. Find that agreeable. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that's it. I think if you diversify your tactics more, uh, I think you're gonna get better engagement, and more interesting conversations, and I'll be able to tune in more. All right. Well, have fun. Be careful, buddy. You too. Bye bye. But at Google, you need to get a legal name change if you're trans for your name card to be updated. So if you're a trans lady and you've got Michael on your name card, like you need a legal name change for them to confirm a change in the thing. And Destiny, I swear to God, I actually looked, I did to double check to make sure it's real. Destiny, um, he said, is that really a big deal? <laughs> how can you, wait, how can you, first of all, I wonder if you watch this whole debate, how can you summarize that so incorrectly? How someone identifies themselves on a name badge versus a security protocol to get into the building. But once you're inside the building, is it okay to be wearing a name badge in your opinion that says a name that you choose, not your dead name? I, I would I would have to know specifically like the protocol of the of how their badges work to really like know that. Because like in my in, in my corporate experience, in my environment experience at the casino, and this is all I have to go on, I could be wrong. I, it's probably the same scary. Like your name badge will usually represent like areas that you can get into or not. So like the color of your badge might matter or a symbol on the badge might matter. If that can be anything, then people would just like switch badges and go wherever the fuck they want. In that case, then no, you can't. But now if these are literally just like fucking like name tags or whatever, well then yeah, I guess you should be able to put whatever name you want on it. If it doesn't Bro, my position is so so reasonable. Vosh is such a piece of shit. What the fuck? This is such a reasonable take. Mean anything? But if these badges are used okay, to like so sign into area, yeah, I guess. But like, my people mom think that badges. People that have never worked a job before, they think that a badge is like a name tag. But now, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't worked a real job in like fucking a decade or more, right? But like, my guess is it's probably only gotten more that badges have a lot of technology built into them. You probably swipe them in to get into certain areas. They might okay you in to like. Like, I don't know, even computer related shit. I don't know. Like, security might identify you in certain ways. Like, past just actually looking at it, you might actually use some of these badges to get into doors or whatever, you know? Like, my guess is going so, to be that. Okay, but, so would, would you then think it was kind of uh, hypocritical for them to not allow them to do something so simple as that and then also use, like, the gay logo? Do they use their IDs pro, to swipe in? Do they, do they use their IDs to swipe in for access anywhere? I don't know. If you don't know don't this, know. then I, why I, are you- I, I, Wait, 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 hold on. If you don't know this, why are you talking about this at all? You have no idea what you're talking about then. You understand that, right? What do you mean? You have no, no. idea what you're- Because if they do use these to swipe in for things, and if these badges are, like, unique and important, then you would agree then that they probably should have their, like, state names on them. I don't know anything about their security protocol badges. <laughs> I hate this guy so much. I'm talking about name tags. Like, okay, but that's, do they use the email? That's what the email sent. But we do they use their name because some people, some people. I hate this guy.